the classification of atrophy meeting of an international group of experts was organized to obtain a consensus and to propose recommendations for protocols for both non neovascular and neovascular amd in terms of definitions imaging protocols detection classification quantification and monitoring that can be used in interventional trials and natural history studies the report of the first two meetings proposed the optimal combination of imaging modalities for use in future natural history and interventional clinical studies after discussing the advantages and disadvantages of the various options for each imaging modality one of four recommendations was given R for recommended, N for not recommended, O for optional, and D for discretionary use of the reading center. The recommendations were given for use at baseline, at follow-up, and at the end of the study for ten different imaging modalities in both non-neovascular and neovascular AMD. Non-stereoscopic color fundus photography is recommended at the beginning and end of all studies. It is also the modality of choice for detection of various findings such as hemorrhages and focal pigmentary changes. Confocal fundus autofluorescence imaging is recommended for both interventional and non-interventional trials in all types of AMD to monitor for the development and progress of atrophy. Quantitative fundus autofluorescence is a newer modality that has been deemed optional at this point. Near infrared reflectance images complement fundus autofluorescence imaging and should be included in all protocols. Multicolor confocal scanning laser ophthalmoscopy is considered an optional imaging modality as specific utility has not yet been demonstrated. Today, OCT is an integral part of retinal evaluation and thus is recommended at all stages of trials involving AMD. Volume scan should cover an area of at least 6 by 6 mm. OCT should be performed at every visit with a distance of not more than 120 microns between single line scans. Where multiple image averaging is possible, at least 10 line scans should be average for noise reduction. Fundus fluorescent angiography in non-neovascular AMD trials can be considered to exclude the presence of neovascularization and is a discretionary recommendation. In neovascular AMD, it is recommended in all stages of the trial. Imaging should cover the central 30 degrees and a 10-minute late phase should be included. OCTA and wide field imaging are at present optional in AMD studies for exploratory purposes. The third CAM report was directed towards obtaining a consensus with respect to characterizing atrophy associated with age-related macular degeneration in terms of defining atrophy using any of the imaging methods and determining reproducible OCT criteria for the grading and classification of atrophy. Atrophy in the context of AMD means loss of tissue or irreversible attenuation of tissue. The third CAM report recommended OCT as the reference imaging modality for identifying early atrophic changes with other methods used for confirmation. It also recommended that the atrophic stages should be named according to the affected anatomic layer as identified by OCT. In this regard, CAM recommended four terms to describe the types of atrophy in AMD. They are Complete RPE and outer retinal atrophy or CRORA, incomplete RPE and outer retinal atrophy or IRORA, complete outer retinal atrophy and incomplete outer retinal atrophy. These terms may be used to describe atrophy either in the presence or absence of choroidal neovascularization. If you notice here, there is no reference to the term geographic atrophy. But because of the deep association of this term with AMD in the literature, the CAM decided to retain the term with its use being restricted to define atrophy without evidence of either present or past evidence of CNV on color fundus photography. So geographic atrophy comes under the umbrella of CRORA. However, if the atrophy was remote 
from an area of CNV, then the term geographic atrophy may be used to describe such a lesion. Nascent geographic atrophy was suggested to be retained as the term to describe irora in the absence of CNV as evident on OCT. The third report also detailed the minimum criteria for the presence of serora, which included three inclusive and one exclusive criteria. The inclusive criteria are region of hypertransmission of at least 250 microns in diameter in any lateral dimension, zone of attenuation or disruption of the retinal pigment epithelium of at least 250 microns in diameter, and evidence of overlying photoreceptor degeneration. Photoreceptor degeneration includes all of the following features. Loss of the interdigitation zone, loss of the ellipsoid zone, loss of the external limiting membrane, and thinning of the outer nuclear layer. The key exclusion criteria are the presence of scrolled RPE or other signs of an RPE tear because areas of RPE and eventual uh, photoreceptor loss resulting from an RPE tear were not judged to constitute serum. CAM also stipulated that in actual clinical practice, some OCT features may be borderline and difficult to classify, in which case additional features from other imaging modalities such as fundus autofluorescence, near infrared reflectance imaging and color or multicolor fundus photography may be used for confirmation. The criteria are as follows. Sharply demarcated borders are common to all the three. In FAF, the lesion should be hypofluorescent. In near infrared reflectance, the lesion is hyperreflective. And in color fundus photography, the lesion should be hypopigmented with increased visibility of the choroidal vessels. The important criteria is that these features should be present over a diameter of uh, greater than or equal to 250 microns. The fourth CAM report detailed the features that defined IRORA in the context of AMD with conventional drusen, which include three OCT features which should be present and be vertically aligned. A region of signal hypertransmission into the choroid, a corresponding zone of attenuation or disruption of the retinal pigment epithelium with or without persistence of basal lamina deposits, evidence of overlying photoreceptor degeneration such as subsidence of the inner nuclear and outer plexiform layers, presence of a hyporeflective wedge in the Henley's fiber layer, thinning of the outer nuclear layer, disruption of the external limiting membrane or disintegrity of the ellipsoid zone and when these criteria do not meet the definition of serora. Here also an RPE tear is an exclusion criteria. If only some of the three main criteria are present, then such a person should be said to be at risk for progression to irora. The CAM-5 report focused on description of anatomic features associated with progression to geographic atrophy in eyes with non-neovascular AMD. The description of each of these is out of the scope of this video. The sixth CAM report detailed the inter-reader agreement for each of the OCT signs in AMD. The agreement between the readers when assessed in a two-category classification, that is, presence or absence of atrophy differed based on the type of atrophy. For irora, there was moderate agreement and for serora, there was substantial agreement. There was similar moderate agreement in a three category classification that is no atrophy versus irora versus serora. In further exploratory analysis, when looking for atrophy in an earlier stage, if only subsidence of the outer plexiform and inner nuclear layers or a hyporeflective wedge-shaped band were used as criteria instead of any of the features of photoreceptor degeneration, the agreement was better. Similarly, in a three-category classification, if the same subsidence of the outer plexiform and inner nuclear layers or a hyporeflective wedge-shaped band alone were taken as criteria for photoreceptor degeneration for stage 1 and these 
plus choroidal hypertransmission of greater than or equal to 250 microns as stage 2 again there was better agreement all these findings would possibly lead to a better classification criteria for use in trials in the future so that's it for today 